Hello, welcome to today's exciting show, the law show. Here we talk about law, 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 and give you the information that can assist you to make informed decisions about your legal rights uh, whenever you have to do that. You know, one day or, or the other, you may come across, you know, law, um, issues of law that you have to deal with. So it's important when you watch this show that you take away some information that you can actually, actually use. You know, in, in military circles, they call it actionable um, information, like actionable, actionable intelligence you know intelligence information that you can use that's what we give you here and let me see this opportunity to thank all of you who have been watching thank you very much and uh, those of who have subscribed thank you very much and if you are watching for the first time you are welcome and please do try to subscribe and click the notification bell so that anytime we post videos you know it gets across to you now when uh, someone is charged in court with um with an offense you know somebody is is a defendant or an accused person in a case in court uh, what are the the documents that he compulsorily compulsorily must be given to him even before the trial starts you know um in some jurisdictions in nigeria by jurisdictions i mean in some states uh, the law actually requires that even before the charge is filed, those documents must be must accompany the charge that is being filed. So, what are these documents now? Uh, the importance of these cannot be overemphasized. Any person who is, you know, coming to court to face a charge must actually know what the charge against him is and what is the evidence, you know, actually to to substantiate this charge. Um, you know, gone are the days. Nigeria has passed the stage now where, unlike before, where the, the government could just, you know, file just a charge against somebody in court, just a charge sheet with no supporting evidence, nothing to, to show the person, you know, the details, you know, of the, of the charge. Um, and the person will face the charge, and it is only as the trial goes on, they call the first witness, call the second one, that, you know, really, the nature of the allegation will begin to unfold. So, that used to be the law. But now, you know, Nigeria has moved beyond that from, um, I think it was about 2014, 2015, when the Supreme Court came up with the decision that um, in every criminal case, in every criminal case, every criminal case, and I use the word every criminal case robustly, meaning widely, meaning any case at all that could lead to conviction or fine, irrespective of the cadre of court, whether it is um, magistrate court, whether it is mobile court, whether it is area court, whether it is high court, any court at all, if the case is a criminal case, Certain documents must be given to the uh, defendant, and they all must be given to the defendant. So we'll be looking at it. What are the documents, and um, you know how can you, if if you are a defendant or you are a lawyer or you are you know a judicial officer, how can you insist that these documents be given to the defendant? Okay. So um, first off, first off, let's establish the basis for giving of these documents. Or should we start from that or talk about first? Let's talk first about the Supreme Court decision in COP and Okoye. For those who are lawyers, if you are a lawyer practicing in Nigeria or you are a judicial officer and you are watching this, you probably are familiar, I'm sure, with the case of Commissioner of Police versus Okoye. COP v Okoye, as it's referred to. That was a decision of the Supreme Court of Nigeria where the Supreme Court considered uh, the provisions of the Constitution as it relates to uh, providing uh, facilities to an, uh, an accused person. Okay, let me just, let just read the, the specific provision that was considered by, by the Supreme Court there in that case. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. 
That's section 36. Sometimes your consular knowledge becomes a little bit rusty, okay? Section 36, subsection 6. Okay, subsection 6B, 36, subsection 6B. 36, 6B of the Constitution provides that every person who is charged with a criminal offense shall, mandatorily, shall, means mandatory, every person who is charged with a criminal offense shall be entitled to B, be given adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his defense. So, once you are charged with a criminal offense, there are certain things that you know you are entitled to. One of it is you should be given adequate time. In other words, you cannot just be arrested, you know, right now and you know charged to court and right there and then you are asked plead you plead plead. You know why you are still saying and what happened now? Uh, my lord, I don't know why I'm here. Are you guilty or not guilty? Like some mobile courts do, which is very wrong. Very wrong. Mobile courts. Very wrong. You you arrest somebody at 6 a.m. You take him to court at, at 6.30. You lock him up. By 9 o'clock, when the court opens, you charge him before a court. Or you arrest him at 8.30. By now, you charge him to court. The Constitution says you must give him adequate time. Not just time, but adequate time. And facilities. For the preparation of his defense. In other words, you must give him adequate time before the case. You must give him facilities before the case. And you must allow him to prepare his defense before his case. So once there is a criminal charge, you cannot arrest somebody and in 30 minutes you charge him to court. No. You have not. Have you given him adequate time? You have not. So this is the subsection that came up in the case of COP versus Okoye. Now, what happened in Okoye's case was that uh, the people were charged to court by the police. Um, I think in Nanambra State or Imo State or one of those places. You can find it out. They, they said, okay, yeah, you charge us to court, but we need to get all the statements of witnesses that you intend to rely on. We need to get all the documents. In other words, give us the facilities to prepare our defense because you just arrested us. We don't have the facilities. We cannot begin to prepare our defense. You have the documents. You give them to us. There was argument. The prosecutor argued that, no, trials in magistrate courts are summary trials. And because they are summary trials, um, the, the defendant or the accused person is not entitled to be given uh, you know, documents in the possession of the police or the prosecution. And the magistrate agreed with them, said this is summary trial, you are not entitled to the document. Summary trial is summary, fast, 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 fast. So all these arguments you are bringing are not for magistrate court. The matter went on appeal to the high court. The high court agreed. It went on appeal, I think, to the court of appeal. Court of appeal also agreed. Then it went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, their lordships looked at it as a constitutional matter. Seven justices of the Supreme Court said, no, no, no. All of you are wrong. And the defendants are right. Once you charge somebody to court, once you charge somebody to court on a criminal charge, whether the trial is summary or not uh, summary, whether it is whatever you call it, as long as it's a criminal trial, as long as it can lead to fine, it can lead to imprisonment or whatever, it's not a civil case. Once it's a criminal case, anyhow you put it, anyhow you dress it, once it can lead, it's a criminal charge, you must give him all the documents obtained at public expense, all the documents with the police. Any document they will require for, for, from you. In other words, statements of witnesses, you must give him. All the witnesses the police interviewed, you must give him all of them. All of them. Both those that you are going to use and those you are not going to use. Those that are for him, those that are escapatory, you must give him. Two, documents, photographs, uh, video recordings, etc. Documents, all these are classified as documents. All documents that you are going to use, you must show it to him. If you have exhibits you want to tender, you must show him. So, that's the decision of COP 
versus Okoye. And COP and Okoye did not actually bring anything new. Okay? He just restated what has always been in the constitution. So having said that, COP and Okoye, having said that, let us now look at the, the documents that, you know, I will just look at the list of them that they have to be given. So if you are, okay, defendant in a case or you are an accused person facing trial or you are a lawyer defending an accused person or you are even a judex or you are a prosecutor or defense counsel, whichever side you are on, we are all on the same side. We are all on the side of justice, okay? So it doesn't matter which side anybody is on. At the end of the day, we want to see justice done. So these are the documents you must compulsorily, compulsorily provide. All right, let's start from um, um, the ACJA. As you know, the ACJA... In, in some states did not specify these documents but of course the constitution talks about facilities so these facilities refer to any any documents that the prosecution intends to rely on and again COP and Okoye established that the prosecution will provide it at their expense you know at their expense not at the because somebody who's facing trial is not supposed to give you money to prosecute him uh -huh. so you ought to do that on your own um so that's that now in um in Edo State of Nigeria, where we can start from, in Edo State of Nigeria, um, the Chief Judge made the practice direction on the implementation of the Administration of Criminal Justice Law 2018 in the Court of Edo State Judiciary. It's a long, 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 long one, okay. But it's just called practice direction. Practice direction on the implementation of the ACGL of Edo State. It was effective on the 1st of June 2018, issued by the Honorable Chief Judge of Edo State. Now, order two, order two rule two thereof provides, and I'm going to read it out. In commencing or instituting criminal proceedings before the courts, the complaint or charge or information shall be accompanied by A. Copies of proof of evidence. Copies of proof of evidence. That's number one. Number two. Written statement on oath of the witnesses. Written statement on oath of the witnesses. Three. List of witnesses to be called at the trial. Four. Copies and list of every document to be relied on at the trial. And five, list of non-documentary exhibits. In other words, everything that the prosecution has, you must give copies to the defendant. Everything that you have. And this one provides that in commencing or instituting the criminal proceedings before the courts, the complaint or charge shall be accompanied by all of this. So this is applicable at the point of filing the charge, of commencing the charge, of commencing the case not after commencing so if 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 you in the prosecution in a do state in any court in a do state wants to commence a criminal proceeding to commence or institute okay so we use the words of the of the practice direction because it may be you may say we did not commence it we instituted it or we did not institute it we commenced it whichever one you want you want to do any way you want to do it the law says, in commencing or instituting criminal proceedings before the courts, as in sub rule 1 above, the complaint or charge or information shall be accompanied by these five things. And we're going to try and list them on the, on the you know, screen for you. One, copies of proof of evidence. So, the proof of evidence, everything, meaning all the statements obtained by the prosecution. You can remove some and leave some. You can't remove the ones that are, or, or that are unfavorable and leave the ones that are damning to the defender. You must put everything, everything, because you have a legal duty as a prosecutor, not a persecutor, to provide to the court everything you got from investigation. So that's number one. Number two, written statement on oath of the witnesses. Written statement on oath of the witnesses. In other words, it is no longer allowed for witnesses to come to court these days 
in the criminal trial, raise up their hand and say, I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give in this case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And then you start. Uh, my name is uh, Dele Ibinedio. I live at number 10, uh, Osamuyi Street, uh, Abuja. Uh, my telephone number is so, so, so. My work is so, so, so. On so, so, so day of uh, January 2020, I was at uh, walking along the road. He starts giving his evidence, you know, in chief, narrating it from A to Z. It's no longer allowed. Everything a witness has to say in a criminal case now must be written down in a statement on oath. He must swear it. When he swears it, then the, the that sworn statement on oath is what we now he will not admit in court. That is his evidence in chief. So, statement, written statements on oath of the witnesses. The list of witnesses to be called at the trial. You must provide this list. How many witnesses do you have? Provide them. Okay? Then the copies and lists of every document to be relied upon at the trial. That's the number four. Number five is your list of non-documentary exhibits. So, if there was a card that was used in the, in the crime, commission of the crime, or there was an axe, a gun, you know, a house was burned down, arson or whatever, you know, you are you know, perfectly allowed to provide a list because you can't bring those things physically and give to the you know, other guy and say, this is it. But you can provide a list. And the, the purpose, of course, is to enable them also, if they want to do their investigation, for the purpose of their defense, to be able to examine those things so that they'll be ready for, for cross-examination. Um, all right, so this is um, now let, let me read something in order to rule five. I think that's important. Order two rule five says, in all courts, except the courts otherwise that now this is the, this is interesting. It says, in all courts, all courts. So if you are a court, you are a court. Okay, if you are a court, you are you are to implement this. He says, in all courts, a charge sheet. Together with the copies of proof of evidence, statement of evidence, list of witnesses, and copies and list of exhibits to document to be relied on at the trial shall be served on the defendant within 14 days of filing. So if for any reason, at the time of filing, these documents were not attached, you have not more than two weeks to serve it. Otherwise, a condition precedent for the court to exercise jurisdiction would have been eroded. Okay, so that is uh, that is in Edo State. Now, the practice direction. There are some who have argued that uh, it's a practice direction. Practice direction is not uh, is not uh, binding on the court. It's just a direction. Well, in in um, in in the case of Metu versus Federal Republic of Nigeria, Metu and Federal Republic of Nigeria, Olisa Metu, you know Olisa Metu, the the. The former secretary, I think secretary of the People's Democratic Party. You remember the one when he was being tried, you know, when he started trial, he was very healthy, but as the trial proceeded, the man would come with a neck brace. He didn't break his neck. He fell, oh, my neck is broken. Then he come with a stretcher. Then he come with a wheelchair. You know, all those um, theatrics. So at some point, the, the, the court now decided, look, you know what, <laughs> if you like, oh, Come with uh, uh, we come wearing a, a big Chinese hat. Anything you like to bring, bring, but the trial must uh, continue. If you like, come on your bed. Come wear your pajamas. Come wearing pampas. Anyone you want to come, come with. But the trial must go on. So he went up to the Supreme Court, arguing. Why should the court continue and all that? The judge, the Supreme Court said, yeah, the, the Justice Abank from the Federal High Court is right. Go and face your trial. Anyway, in deciding that, Supreme Court came up with this principle of law, which I want to read to you. Duty on court to give effect to statutory provisions. The Supreme Court said, a law court has the overriding duty. A law court has the overriding duty in giving effect to statutory provisions and court practice directions. That's what I'm going to. A law court has the overriding duty in giving effect to court 
practice direction. So once a practice direction is made, no court, no 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 judge within that um, so let's say the hemisphere, judicial hemisphere or jurisdiction has the authority to say, oh, I'm not going to implement it. It's just a practice direction made by the chief judge. Chief judge was just, you know, acting, you know, on her own. <laughs> no, I'm a brother judge, so I cannot, I can decide not to implement it. No, Supreme Court says practice directions because the chief judge derives the power to, to uh, enact practice direction, both from the ACJA, ACJL, and the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria. So these two um, laws, Constitution and the ACGA, give the Chief Judge the power to enact practice direction. Once it's enacted, it has the force of law and the force of the Constitution, and you are bound to implement them. So that is for Edo State. I rest my case on that one of Edo State. Let's go a little bit further to the East, shall we? Maybe to... Um, Enugu State of Nigeria. Enugu State of uh, Nigeria. Hmm, where is it now? Do, 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 do. Okay. Enugu State of Nigeria. Um, they had their Adjourn of Criminal Justice Law 2017 of Enugu State. Adjourn of Criminal Justice Law 2017 of Enugu State. So that's that. Now, the provision is in, you can find it from sections, actually from section 271 to 275, 271 to 275, I'll just read briefly for you, 275, in prosecuting a case at the magistrate court, the prosecution shall file, shall file, prosecution shall file at the magistrate court, A, sworn statement of witnesses and documents he wishes to rely on and list of exhibits so statements of witnesses and the documents he wishes to rely on and the list of exhibits okay uh, then where the defendant is not represented by a lawyer Prosecution will take his oral evidence in chief and be cross-examined. So if there is no lawyer, prosecution will take their oral evidence in chief because it may not be it may not be um, possible for the unrepresented defendant to be able to read witness statements on oath and understand it. So you know you not have to do it um, in the old way by you know giving rehearsing all the events through all your witnesses. And then see where the defendant who initially was not represented obtains legal representation, the outstanding prosecution witness shall adopt their written sworn deposition as their evidence in chief. Mm. So that is, that is in, a, in a magistrate court. Now in the high court, um, proofs of evidence shall be prepared in all charges relating to capital offense, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's read it. 274, session 274. Uh, the prosecution shall file and serve on the defendant the proof of evidence which shall consist of A, a statement of the charge against the defendant, B, where the defendant has applied for election, a statement that he elected to be tried by the High Court, C, the name, the address, and statement of any material witness who the prosecution intends to call. D, the name, address, and statement of any material witness whom the prosecution does not intend to call. <laughs> so you see, here, they are supposed to give both the statements of witnesses they intend to call and statements of witnesses they do not intend to call. So they must give the name, the address, and the statements of those witnesses. So that the, the defendant, if he wants to summon those witnesses to, for his defense, will have the opportunity to do that. Um, okay, we'll just do this and then we'll take a short break. Provided that the submission of such names shall not prevent the prosecution from calling any such witness at the trial if the prosecution later so desires. Then E, 
These are the documents you must make available now. The first is the statement of the charge. Second is a statement that the defendant elected summary trial by the High Court. Three, names, address, statement of any material witness the prosecution intends to call. D, name, address, and statement of any material witness whom the prosecution does not intend to call. E, the copy of any report, if available, made by a doctor about the state of mind of a defendant in custody. F, records of convictions, if any, affecting the credibility of any witness for the prosecution. See? So if the prosecution is calling any witness and that witness has been convicted before, the prosecution has a duty to make available the record of the conviction. G, the statements of the defendant. H, an inventory of all the exhibits to be produced to the court at trial. I, sworn statement of all prosecution witnesses intended to be called at the trial. J, sworn report of the prosecution police investigating officer. Sworn report. <laughs> sworn report. Not this one. Sworn report of the police investigating officer. So if the police investigating officer has finished his case, he has to swear to the report. It's not just enough for him to write it. He must go and swear it. So that if it is found that he has lied, you know what follows, perjury. K, copies of documents to be relied upon and other exhibits intended to be relied upon. And L, any other statement, report, or document which the prosecution may consider relevant to the case. See? So this is Enugu State where all this has been enacted. I think it's a convenient point to take a short, short, short break and we'll be right back. Please don't go away. 24 hours, seven days a week. You can find your favorite program, Law and You, only on Pinaco TV. We're looking at... Um, the documents will be given to an accused person or a defendant before you know trial starts. So we have looked at uh, those states. We have looked at uh, uh, generally COP and Okoye, which is in all the states of Nigeria. Anytime you you bring a criminal charge against an accused person or a defendant or in Nigeria, you must give him all the facilities he needs. But some states have gone further to sort of uh, codify it, you know, in their laws. Um, let's look at Delta states. Delta states. Delta states all is in uh, uh, section 348, subsection 2. Section 348, subsection 2. That is the Administration of Criminal Justice Law 2017 of Delta State. Uh, subsection 2 provides in a trial in the magistrate's court or tribunal the prosecution shall provide the defendant all materials that the prosecution intends to rely on at the trial before before or at the commencement of the trial so you provide it either before the trial commences or as a trial, you know, um, commences. So, all the materials you intend to rely on. And then, uh, there's another section that provides that um, the examination of witnesses uh, of the prosecution shall be limited only to the adoption of their, uh, of their statements on oath. Uh, but there's one provision there. Hmm. Okay, if I find it, I'll just give it to you. Otherwise, you can leave a comment on the on the comment section, and then I can look for it and give it to you. But there's a provision there that uh, you know. Um, okay, yeah, I found it. I think it's here, right here. That's uh, three five four three five four subsection six. Three five four subsection six of the Administration of Criminal Justice Law of Delta State. Okay. So it provides, and I read it, it says, There shall be no oral examination of a witness during his evidence in chief, except to lead the witness 
to adopt his written statements on oath and tender in evidence all documents and or exhibits referred to in the written depositions. So, you know, there you have it. In data state, in data state, if you are in data state, you are a defendant in a case, the, the, the law has changed. It is no longer the law that witnesses can testify by rehearsing their evidence, you know, from A to Z in, in long hand and in long words, and the judge will write and write, or the magistrate will write and write, or whatever court will write and write. No. Now, the law requires that they must reduce all they have to say, put it in a statement on oath, and they must give it to the defendant, okay? So, and all the heavy documents they intend to rely on and exhibits must be given to the defendant in advance. In advance. So, there you go. Okay? So, that, that is for, is for data, data state. That's for data state. Um, do I need to go further? There is Lagos state. Um, there is the ACJ, which applies in Abuja, and then there are other states. So, but similar provisions are made from Nasarawa to Cross River to River State, everywhere. Similar provisions are made that when you have a defendant who is facing criminal trial, you must give him all the documents that the prosecution intends to rely on. Okay? I think we can all agree about that. Now, if you are enjoying this show, please do subscribe if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel. And also, uh, click the notification bell for Pinnacle TV online. Um, now, YouTube kind of tracks, you know, how long people watch. So, the longer you watch the show, you know, the, the happier you make us, all right? And then, uh, share it with your friends if you think that, you know, the information here could be beneficial to them. Share it with them and give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section. We'll be sure to get back to you. And if you have any questions about what we have discussed, particularly if you are a law student and you are watching law students, you have questions about some of these uh, discussions that we have on law, uh, please don't be shy. Leave your comments. And I will personally be sure, you know, to get back to you. Uh, if you leave your phone number, I can call you. If you leave your, you know, whatever, any way you want to DM me or, or you know, or on Instagram, any way, any, any way you want, uh, Facebook, or uh, through the phone number of Pinnacle TV, or any, anyhow, we'll be sure, you know, I'll be sure to get back to you, particularly if you are a law, a law student. And then, I will just give you a copy of my book, How to File a Successful Human Rights Case, Volume 1, for law students free of, of charge. All right, so, it's your opportunity it been a pleasure talking with you. See you in another video. God bless. 24 hours, 7 days a week. You can find your favorite program, Law and You, only on Pinnacle TV.